In today's video, we're going to check out how the infamous Titanic, the world's first unsinkable ship, sank. Picture this. A colossal ship cutting through the icy waters of the North Atlantic. The Titanic was an engineering marvel of its time, designed to conquer the challenges of the open sea, and at the heart of its resilience was its double-bottomed hull. The double-bottomed hull, a revolutionary concept, offered a safeguard against potential dangers lurking beneath the surface. It consisted of two layers of steel plates forming an outer and inner bottom. Between these layers lay a layer of coal, serving as both insulation and added reinforcement. Imagine the outer layer of the hull as the ship's shield, standing firm against any unexpected encounter with an iceberg or submerged obstacle. It was designed to absorb the impact, minimizing damage and reducing the risk of immediate flooding. But the double bottom design didn't stop there. The inner layer and the coal-filled space acted as an extra layer of protection. In the unfortunate event of the outer layer being breached, this inner layer acted as a safety net preventing water from swiftly flooding the ship. However, the unsinkable notion went beyond just the double-bottomed hull. The Titanic's hull was divided into 16 watertight compartments, each equipped with its own set of watertight doors. These doors could be closed promptly, isolating any damaged section and limiting the spread of water. The idea was simple yet ingenious. Even if one compartment flooded, the remaining sealed compartments would keep the ship afloat. It was believed that the Titanic could sustain significant damage and still remain buoyant, ensuring the safety of its passengers and crew. Picture yourself aboard the mighty Titanic, a floating marvel crafted with meticulous attention to detail. One of its remarkable safety features was the division of the ship into 16 watertight compartments, each equipped with its own set of watertight doors. These compartments were designed as independent units, separated by sturdy walls and sealed off by doors that could be closed quickly and securely. The purpose of these watertight compartments was simple yet vital. In the event of a breach such as a collision with an iceberg, these doors would be closed to contain the flooding and prevent water from spreading throughout the ship. Even if one compartment was filled with water, the remaining sealed compartments acted as watertight barriers, safeguarding the buoyancy and stability of the ship. The idea behind this design was to buy valuable time giving the crew an opportunity to assess the damage and undertake necessary measures to control the flooding. The crew members were trained rigorously in emergency procedures, conducting regular lifeboat drills and ensuring they were well-versed in the operation of the watertight doors. Additionally, the Titanic carried a sufficient number of lifeboats exceeding the minimum requirements set by regulations of that time. These lifeboats were strategically positioned, ready to be launched in case of an emergency. The ship had a significant supply of life jackets for all passengers and crew members, reinforcing its commitment to passenger safety. Although, as we all know, they didn't have nearly enough for everyone on board that fateful night. The Titanic was constructed using cutting-edge techniques of its time. High-quality steel and extensive riveting were employed to ensure the ship's structural integrity, making it less vulnerable to damage and less likely to sink. The use of high-quality steel allowed the Titanic to withstand the immense pressures of the open sea. The ship's robust construction was a testament to the engineering prowess of the era. Extensive riveting played a crucial role in holding the Titanic's steel plates together. Skilled workers meticulously hammered countless rivets into place, ensuring a secure and watertight seal. These advanced construction techniques were employed to create a vessel that could withstand the challenges of the unpredictable ocean bolstering the belief in the Titanic's unsinkable nature. The Titanic was equipped with state-of-the-art safety measures, ensuring the well-being of its passengers and crew. One notable feature was its cutting-edge communication system, allowing for effective communication between different parts of the ship and with other vessels. In the event of an emergency, clear and efficient communication was essential for coordinating rescue efforts and disseminating important information. The Titanic's advanced communication system was a testament to the ship's commitment to passenger safety. Additionally, the Titanic boasted advanced lifeboat davits, which were the mechanisms used to launch the lifeboats. These davits were designed to efficiently lower the lifeboats into the water, ensuring a swift and orderly evacuation if needed. 
In fact, the Titanic exceeded the minimum requirements for lifeboats mandated by regulations at that time. This meant that the ship carried an ample number of lifeboats, capable of accommodating a significant portion of its passengers and crew. The crew members on board the Titanic were extensively trained in maritime safety procedures. They conducted regular lifeboat drills, familiarizing themselves with emergency protocols and ensuring preparedness in the face of potential crises. To further prioritize passenger safety, the Titanic carried a sufficient number of life jackets for all individuals on board. These life jackets were distributed and made readily accessible, emphasizing the ship's commitment to safeguarding its passengers. The Titanic had a highly trained crew that was responsible for the safety and well-being of the passengers. These dedicated individuals underwent extensive training in maritime safety procedures, ensuring they were equipped to handle emergencies effectively. Regular lifeboat drills were conducted to familiarize the crew with evacuation procedures and emergency protocols. These drills prepared them to act swiftly and efficiently in the event of a crisis. In line with regulations, the Titanic carried a sufficient number of life jackets for every passenger and crew member on board. These life jackets were crucial in increasing the chances of survival, providing buoyancy and protection in the event of an evacuation. The Titanic exceeded the minimum requirements for lifeboats set by regulations at that time. This meant that the ship carried more lifeboats than legally required, enhancing the chances of accommodating a significant number of passengers and crew members during an evacuation. Although as it would play out, the ship only had enough lifeboats for about one-third of the passengers on board. If every lifeboat was filled to its maximum capacity, it still would have only been enough to accommodate half of the passengers on board. Even with all of these various safety measures from the structure of the ship to the lifeboats and life jackets, over 1,500 people lost their lives on that bone-chilling night in the North Atlantic Ocean. After learning all of this, would you still go on the Titanic if it was around today? Let us know in the comments below.